Welcome to CoreLogic's Housing Market Update for June 2024. Dwelling values rose 0.8% in May, the 16th consecutive month of growth and the largest monthly gain since October last year. The mid-sized capitals continue to lead the pace of growth, with Perth home values up 2% in May, Adelaide rising 1.8% and Brisbane up 1.4%. In dollar terms, it's the equivalent of the median dwelling value rising by more than $12,000 month to month in each of these cities. The remaining capital cities recorded milder conditions, ranging from a 0.6% lift in Sydney values to a monthly decline of 0.5% in Hobart and a 0.3% fall in Darwin. Differences in the levels of available supply provide the best explanation for the variation in growth rates, with the number of properties available for sale in Perth and Adelaide holding more than 40% below the previous five-year average for this time of the year, while in Brisbane listings are 34% below average. Inventory levels in these markets remain extremely low, despite vendor activity lifting relative to this time last year. Fresh listings are being absorbed rapidly by the market, keeping stock levels low and upwards pressure on housing prices. Conversely, listings across Hobart are tracking 41% above the five-year average, a consequence of lower demand, with home sales 6.4% below the previous five-year average over the rolling quarter. The May update also brought a changing of the guard, with Brisbane replacing Canberra to record the second highest median dwelling value of any capital city, a position Brisbane hasn't held since 1997. With values climbing rapidly, Brisbane overtook Melbourne's median value in December last year, and the gap with Sydney values hasn't been this narrow since October of 2013. The Sydney market also reached a new milestone in May, with values posting a nominal recovery to be equal with the earlier record high set in January of 2022. Sydney dwelling values dropped by 12.4% following the January 2022 peak, finding a floor a year later. The market has since posted a 14.1% rise through the cycle to date. Upper quartile home values have generally shown the lowest rate of growth over the past year. This trend is apparent across every capital city, except Darwin, demonstrating stronger conditions across the more affordable price points of the market. The softer performance comes after upper quartile values recorded a higher rate of gain through the early months of the growth cycle. Conditions have faded across the upper quartile as borrowing capacity reduced and affordability constraints deflected demand towards middle and lower priced properties. The pace of growth across Australian rental markets has eased over the past couple of months, with CoreLogic's National Rental Index rising 0.7% in May, the lowest monthly change since December last year. Most markets have shown a reduction in rental growth relative to the first quarter of the year, when rental demand tends to be seasonally higher. However, the annual pace of rental growth has also eased across most cities, especially in the unit sector where rental growth has been more severe. Although rental growth has eased a little, gross rental yields have continued to trend higher, rising to 3.56% across the combined capitals, the highest gross yield since August of 2019. For most investors, higher yields will be welcome considering variable interest rates for investor loans are averaging about 6.7%. Given the high cost of debt, a large portion of leveraged investors are probably recording a cash flow loss despite the substantial rise in rental income. Sydney home values posted a nominal recovery in May, following a 14.1% rise in values since the market bottomed out in January last year. The sharp rise in home values came after a 12.4% decline in values between January 2022 and January 2023. Sydney dwelling values have been rising for 16 straight months, however the pace of growth is now much lower than it was at the same time last year when values are up 2.1% over the month. The monthly rate of change is held below the 1% mark since August last year, with a median house value of $1.44 million and a median unit value of almost $849,000, Sydney remains by far the highest value capital city. Overall, the trend in housing values and activity continues to be insulated from the combined effects of high interest rates, cost of living pressures and deeply pessimistic consumer sentiment levels. The common denominator across markets where home values are rising is a mismatch between supply and demand. Available housing supply, based on the number of homes advertised for sale over the past four weeks, remains well below average. Capital city listings are 16% below the previous five-year average and nearly 2% lower than a year ago. On the demand side, the quarterly number of home sales was 7.2% above the previous five-year average and 2.8% higher than a year ago. 
It's this disconnect between supply and demand that's trumping the downside pressures from interest rates, high inflation and low sentiment. Despite worsening affordability pressures from both a purchasing and a rental perspective, Australian residents still need to keep a roof over their heads. A supply response still seems to be some way off, with new dwelling approvals once again dipping in April. National approvals are up 3.5% on the same time last year, but they're 23.5% below the decade average. Across the multi-unit sector, approvals are almost 44% below the previous decade average. With a federal government target of 1.2 million homes going live from July 1st, we've seen a raft of policy initiatives supporting a housing supply response from both the federal and the state governments. These stimulus measures include significant funding for social and community housing, a further lift in infrastructure spending, and focused infrastructure support for new housing, as well as more funding for training. However, considering the high cost of building, capacity constraints and scarcity of labour, it's likely to take some time to deliver a material rise in dwelling completions. Measures of housing affordability are clearly worsening across most markets, with the national dwelling value to income ratio rising to 7.7 .7 in March and the time it takes to save for a 20% deposit rising to 10.3 years, assuming households can save 15% of their gross income. Eventually, housing demand and supply will converge, driven by slowing population growth and eventually a ramp up in residential construction activity. But in the meantime, we can probably expect further upwards pressure on housing values alongside a further erosion in housing affordability, even as interest rates stay higher for longer. There's plenty to keep an eye on in the residential property space. You can keep up to date on all the factors that influence housing trends at the research and news pages of the CoreLogic website.